let's uh, let's pivot a little bit into your experience with trad publishing. So you decided to self-publish this one. Um, why don't you maybe walk us through the, what that experience was and then why you ultimately decided to self-publish? Uh, so I... So the, the name, my, title of my first book was called Sundering, and I queried that, and this is like the problem with being a new writer is you make so many mistakes that you don't even know are mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I, I initially queried it after what, what I thought was like my like fifth draft, but it was really like my first draft plus like four rounds of spell check. I didn't, yeah. I didn't understand the substantive nature of edits at the time. Um, so, you know, rejections across the board, no surprise. I had a, uh, there's a, there's a point actually where I got a, I participated in PitMad and got a offer from a small press, but it was a really like low ball, bottom of the barrel offer, like no advance, like small royalties, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like not even getting author copies for free. Had a lunch with another writer who works out at the gym that I work at. Like a, like a, you know, he'd been, he'd been published. He's, you know, a successful writer. He gave me some really good advice some really good perspective. And it boiled down to like, you're just not ready yet. Like go back and make it better. And he, and he was hundred percent right. So then I, I rewrote it, started, started querying again. And this time I was getting, instead of like form rejections or no response, I was getting some personalized responses, but still no full requests or anything. But people were like, you know, oh, this seems interesting, but it's not right for me at this time or some, or something indicated that they were like, that there was some merit to it. Just it wasn't quite there yet. Yeah. And then the, the guy, the editor from that small press who had, who had initially shown interest, I reconnected with him and he had left there and he started actually agenting. And he basically said that he wanted to sit on the other side of the table, advocating for authors instead of, you know, um, instead of being on an acquisitions editor. Um, and he was taking new clients. So I, I queried him after uh, an R and R we, we signed. And so that, you know, so that was the process of getting an agent for that story. And then that book eventually died on sub. I did get, I almost got a deal with Blackstone. Uh, they took it to acquisitions and then the marketing department was kind of the one at the table who shot it down and said that it just wasn't the right time to take on a debut author. Um, and they had other, you know, other fantasy stories they wanted to put their resources towards. And then while that was happening, I was started writing Shadowbane. And then my agent uh, called me on St. Patrick's Day of, yeah, must have must have been, no, it's 2022. Um, and said that he was uh, leaving the industry actually. Uh, and he'd give me some contact info for some other agents at his agency and, um, you know, left some recommendations. And I kind of just decided, I was like, I'm going to take some time to think about this because the other fan uh, agents who represented fantasy at his agency uh, did not represent um, kind of like the grim darky, like really intense, like morally great characters, violent. Mm -hmm. There was stuff was more kind of like adventure -y and whimsical. And so I just knew it wasn't a good fit. So I wasn't going to query them anyways. And the first draft of Shadowbane was 200,000 words. Yeah. And, and I split that in half and then, and then like fleshed out more. And that's so the first half of that fleshed out is what's being, is what's being released now. Um, but at the time it was just a, a 200,000 word monstrosity. And I was like, I'm not going to get a new agent with this. I don't really have a reasonable in with any current agents. And mm -hmm. I wasn't even sure I wanted to do this anymore um, on the traditional side, because I had already had to make some changes that I played ball with because I figured he knew what he was doing and he knows the industry, but that I wasn't thrilled about mm -hmm. just some stuff to the content where he was like, it's going to be easier for me to, to market or sell this. If like this doesn't happen, or if we make this a little softer, mm -hmm. um, like I try not to pull punches when I write and I, I had to pull a few to get Sundering to a place where he felt comfortable approaching publishers with it. So I took about six months and I just, I wrote a really, really terrible uh, movie script just to, to keep writing, but like mm -hmm. take some time off the main project. And just thought about what I wanted to do. And I eventually decided to, to bet on myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's, I've heard, I've, I've talked to a few people that have enjoyed attempting to do the traditional stuff. But most everyone I've talked to, they just eventually, they either kind of had an experience similar to what you've had, where it just didn't, it wasn't quite right and nothing really kind of worked. And then people dropped out unexpectedly. And But most people, I think, end up, wanting to just take a bet on themselves and being like, you know, we can have the control and do the things you want to do. And so are doing that now with Shadowbane, what have you learned in this process since then? As far as getting the book ready to release? Yeah. For, for publishing? Yeah. I feel like I'm still kind of like having my head down in the thick of it because it's not out yet. Mm -hmm. Once I have some distance, I'll be able to kind of like 
sit and like categorize. But um, I mean, six months ago, I was like, I was sitting and Googling like how to release and market a self-published book. Right. And um, I mean, probably the main thing is like that reviews are everything. And that's where I focus most of my effort. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any like, like book swag or like bookmark packages or anything like that. I basically focused all my effort on editorial and arc reviews and uh, interviews. And th like, those are three things I really attacked. We'll, we'll see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I feel like marketing books is so weird. It's so much different than marketing any other thing. Like, cause you're not, you're not selling something that people need. So you're, you got to convince them to buy it. And you're also just selling a, you're selling a story. So you're kind of selling yourself. Like it's just different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it, it's kind of like a little piece of you and if people don't know you. They're not sure what to expect. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I'm, you know, I'm super new at the, the marketing side of this and just personally, like I'm, I'm a pretty like, like down to earth, straightforward guy. So like, I don't like, I, like I was looking at, um, like what platforms to be on and stuff. I've always had a Twitter and I opened and I started Instagram, you know, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of the, it was like, Oh, you have to be on Twitter or I'm sorry on um, TikTok." And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not dancing to sell books. Sorry. Like I can't do that. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not on it. I just don't, I just think it's not my thing. So mm -hmm. also finding not just what works, but what I'm actually like comfortable with and enjoy doing like, yeah. you know, I'll like, I'll sit and, and talk about books and writing or whatever for, for like hours. Like that's, that's like, my you know i'm happy to do that but what but i want it to be like genuine and authentic and uh some of the stuff that some of the marketing strategies that i saw that it's that they were suggesting to do i just doesn't res resonate with me you know yeah.